knee over the ice without dying. That is awesome. After three hours, Lisa and Maya roll into the tiny village where the population is just 430. Hey, Maya. A lot of confusion sometimes between fishing reels and kite reels, but I've actually seen one of these before, and it actually is what they call a line winder. But it's a pretty fancy a line one. Winder. It's a it's a beautiful piece of uh, kiting equipment. It is. It's interesting. And what's cool about this? This is a brake, like on a ten-speed bike. Right. So when you're holding it, you actually put this strap around your shoulder, and you put your line on here, and this would be the handle, and you can reel it in like this. Or if you're letting the kite line out, it'll just go, stop it with the brake. Oh, yeah. And this is like all aluminum alloy. And I mean, it's like a disc brake technology. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. This all sounds great, but I really just need her to tell me what it's worth. Considering its rarity, and if you found the right person that wanted it right now, I think you could probably get 700 bucks out of it. In brand new Grave Trade next on History, then later, Daryl Sheets is on fine form in Storage Wars at 11. Trade can get tricky in the bartering business. You know, what a rookie move. Now I don't even know if this trade's gonna happen. But the road is smoother when traveled with old friends. Speaking of old, the 80s called and they want their boat back. Oh, man. I can trade anything to anyone and walk away with the best deal. <laughs> yeah! You gonna go alone this time? No, you're definitely coming with me. I don't know. <laughs> Barter Kings, Fridays from 9 on Bio. Keeping the lid on the delicate business of death. Exclusive to history, this is brand new Grave Trade. Death, the ultimate taboo. But for some people, dealing with the dead is their life. Just through here is the embalming room. Just putting them like a massaging oil on the face just keeps it soft. This particular item came from um, a guy that was hung for a murder. In the heart of London's East End, family-run undertakers Thomas Cribb and Sons have been burying our beloved for five generations. Only the smallest ones there and the tallest ones here, please. While all across the country, teams of archaeologists are digging up our ancestors. From the people who put us into the ground to those who bring us back up again, we lift the lid on the dead. Coming up, death is very much a family affair. From the beginnings of recorded history... Do we have a father and daughter, or could it be father and younger bride, woman, wife? to the importance of family today. I have the benefit of knowing what he actually looks like, or what he normally looks like, so that's why I chose to actually try and prepare him and get him ready. To the couple who refuse to be parted, even in death. They've always been together, and their wish was that they sort of pass away together. So it is quite, it's a bit, bit fairy tale ending, we all thought. directors Thomas Cribb and Sons have been serving the families of the deceased for over 130 years. Fourth generation Cribb John Harris is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the growing business with 10 branches and over 16 members of staff. I mean, is there any magic way of getting through to that secretary? Because going through the switchboard is just a nightmare. I'm sure there's easier ways of making a living. Um, it's the only one I know. Working alongside John is daughter and senior partner, Sarah. The job is 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's, you never switch off. Cribs provide the whole package, from fitting coffins and preparing the bodies of the deceased to arranging and conducting funerals. It's the first week of January, a hectic time for Cribs after the Christmas break. He 
historically, um, you, you're always busier this time of the year. But primarily it's because you've just got shorter working weeks. So that, you can imagine, just creates a, a problem. With the number of funerals stacking up, everyone is preparing for a busy week, including the team over at Crib's very own stables. Many East End families request a traditional horse-drawn funeral. At the moment, we've got um, 12 Frisian horses that we use for the funerals, and we've got two Hungarian grey horses that we use when people want grey horses on, uh, on a funeral. Cribs have owned the stables for over 25 years. Peter Gibson is the head coachman. The horses have become more popular. Um, from when we first got the horses, I think in our first year, we've probably done about 16 funerals, horse-drawn funerals, and it rose up to a maximum of 750 funerals a couple of years ago. Now it's sort of levelled out. We're probably doing about 500, 500 fu horse-drawn funerals a year. Families can choose from 11 different carriages, and today the Dottridge hearse, built in 1890, is the carriage of choice. A lot of people like traditional things, especially being in the East End of London, they like keeping things traditional, and horses have been popular for years now. Driving the horse-drawn hearse is Philip Sharp. 20 years now I've been at Cribs, and just got into it by chance. I just used to help him move the lorry and groom in them days. And then eventually Stan offered me a full-time job as a coachman. And I've been with him ever since. The Dottridge has been requested for the funeral of William Greenland. Arranged by his daughter, Maureen. Great-grandfather was um, had horses from a very early age. My dad, who having horses today, grew up with horses, and you don't often see it now. You really don't see it, and it's just something that when you do, it, it turns people's heads, and it's just a mark of respect. I don't think you can do anything more than what we're doing today for our dad. As the first funeral of the day gets underway, a special visitor turns up in the form of third generation crib, Stan. Nice to see you. And you? How are things? And you. Wanna have an inspection? Hi, Chantel. Hi, Stan. How are you? Very well, thank you. Jolly good, yeah, lovely. Stan started in the family business in 1942 and likes to keep an eye on things. This is um, a copy of the freedom, I've got the freedom of the City of London. If you're a member of the Corporation of London, um, you are entitled as a freeman to drive your sheep over London Bridge. And I've done that. Grandad set the foundations from, from where I was, and obviously he learned that from, uh, from his, well, from your my, mentors as well, wasn't well, it? So which is Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Tom, yeah. I mean, say, um, he'd gone away from the business for many years but he came back with a great knowledge. And a lot of what goes on here today uh, stems from that. Um, we've all learnt from other people's experience and then your, your own input into the business. Sarah came in 12 years ago and, um, you know, since then she's progressed and uh, I mean, so I'm proud of the way she's, she's come on in the business. Um, it, it, it's brilliant. I've got a long way to go still in the family business before um, I've earned the respect of the previous um, <laughs> previous sons. Um, it just each generation has thrown up um, new challenges um, that the companies had to overcome um, and strive towards. You know, in Grandad's generation, you couldn't have asked for a better person to fill the boots than my grandfather. My father's generation, again, you know, everyone's filled the role perfectly. So there's some very large shoes that um, my generation has to, to fill. Carrying on the family tradition is Stan's grandson, 24-year-old Jack, 
He's about to lead a funeral unlike any other in his young career. Husband and wife, Jess and Ted Seppel, died just days apart, and the family have requested a double funeral. I've never uh, conducted a funeral where the husband and wife have both passed. It is unusual. Um, I think it's quite nice, personally, because uh, talking to the family and that, they've always been together, and their, their sort of wish was that they sort of pass away together. I think there was about a week in between their passings. So it is quite, it's a bit, a bit fairy tale ending, we all thought, you know, because uh, I guess when you live with someone, I've been with someone since 1942, it's like pretty much a lifetime. And they spent all their time together, they, you know, seemed like a real lovely couple. In charge of staffing for Jack's double funeral is Dean Shaw. John, with um, that double job, Dan and Joe can come back. I was going to get Joe. Do you want Joe on that job then, or do you, I was going to get Joe to be the other bearer on this one for Paddy? You should be back there by 2.30, shouldn't you? Mm. With a, you know, a large funeral, especially when you've got two coffins there, you need eight bearers. And it's just the logistics on a normal day. Yeah, just having eight members of staff on one funeral is, yeah, just a logistical nightmare at times. The orders now they've done look fine, but on the other hand, it's tomorrow. We just need to have a few things happen tomorrow. You've then got to pick staff out the hat. So as the orders are now, trust me, by tomorrow evening they would have, or tomorrow afternoon they would have changed. Coming up, archaeologists uncover a rare medieval burial site. They've obviously been placed very, very carefully, side almost side by side. The other interesting thing is that the the arm positions as well, they're both similar. And Jack must rise to the challenge of his first ever double funeral. Excellent, isn't it? It's a real nice circumstance, if you know what I mean. For some, the call of the wild. A pack of wolves circling me is irresistible. If you don't get any meat, you won't survive. But are they close to nature? Or close to madness? We haven't died yet. <laughs> yeah. What do I do for a living? I live for a living. Meet the mountain men. It don't get much better than this. Wednesdays at 9 on History. Made every day. More and more families are discovering Nutella. Each 15 gram portion contains two whole hazelnuts, some skimmed milk and cocoa. And Nutella releases its energy slowly. Wake up to Nutella. They put their trust in you, like you put your trust in us. And that's why we promise that Johnson's Baby Extra Sensitive Wipes are proven safe and gentle for newborn skin from the very first day. Listen up, hedgehogs. You may think you're intolerant to milk as a species, but there's no need to mope about. Hey, lady in the bow, you're not intolerant to dairy. You're intolerant to lactose, the sugars in dairy. Remove the lactose and buy Jingo. It's dairy all round. Say yes to a milky latte. Say yes to hot buttery crumpets. Say yes to a really cheesy cheese pizza. Go on, say yes to dairy. Get romantic and make Valentine's Day cards even more special by adding your own personal touch at funkypigeon.com. Personalise yours with pictures, names and messages. It could even be sent to you to write yourself. Cards start from just £1.79. Buy two or more and get free delivery. Funkypigeon.com. Funky, fun and free delivery. Cool. Hey, happy birthday. Let's take a picture. Come on, just one smile. <laughs> 